from the historic Loretto Abbey Chapel. With the kind cooperation of the Toronto Catholic District School Board, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents The Daily TV Mass. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the Father, the friendship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Welcome to the celebration of this televi daily televised Mass. I am Father Michael Coots. The televising of this Mass is made possible by a contribution from three donors. The first is Irene D Remedios from Scarborough, Ontario, for the repose of the soul of her husband, Albert, for a personal intention and for the members, family members to strengthen their faith. <clears throat> the second is an anonymous donor from Toronto, Ontario, for the good health and peace within the family and for the repose of the soul of her nephew. The third is Antoinette um, Martino from Toronto, Ontario, for the repose of the souls of Sav Saverio Martino and all her deceased families in thanksgiving for blessings received and for all the souls in purgatory. Our thanks go out to the donors for the gift of this Mass as we celebrate the feast of the Nativity of our Blessed Virgin Mary. And to prepare ourselves now to celebrate this Eucharist, we ask the God of mercy and compassion to forgive us. You are sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord, have mercy. Lord, you came to call sinners, Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us praise God as we say, glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Impart to your servants, O Lord, the gift of heavenly grace, that at the feast of the Nativity of the Blessed Virgin Mary, we may bring peace to those for whom the birth of her Son was the dawning of salvation. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. We know that all things work together for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, in order that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And those whom he predestined, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. The word of the Lord. With delight I rejoice in the I trusted in your steadfast love. My heart shall rejoice in your salvation. With delight I rejoice in the Lord. I will sing to the Lord because he has dealt bountifully with me. Rejoice in the Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. 
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Now the birth of Jesus the Messiah took place in this way, when his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child by the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a righteous man, and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, a virgin will conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. The Gospel of the Lord. Epoyesen megala odinatos. The Almighty has done great things for me. It is through these lens that we view the birthday of the Blessed Virgin Mary. From the time she was born, the Almighty has done great things for her. When she accepted to be the mother of God, the Almighty had done great things for her. As she stood by the cross, the Almighty had done great things for her. About a few weeks ago, I buried my Aunt Rose. She was the last of my mother's sisters. And as I look at those women, the two that married my uncles, Noreen and Marge, my mother, Eugene, and her three sisters, Cecilia, Lena, and Rose, I looked at them and, and they were very strong women. Latin expresses them most beautifully, mulieres fortes. There was, they didn't have a theology degree between them, they didn't have a PhD, but they knew the love of Jesus Christ, the length and the breadth and the height and the depth, the knowledge of which surpasses all understanding. It was a treasure in their lives, and they handed it down to their children and grandchildren. Like so many women in our church today, you can pass them in the mall and never give them a second glance. And yet, they are the ones that hold our church together. They know that they cannot force their children to get into the church to attend their services, and so they not stop nagging, but they are invitational. But they are very firm. You stay in my house, you live by my rules. And the rules were pretty simple. Respect for the elders, kindness towards others, and forgive your brothers and sisters. And that was very important in our family because although we are not Irish, we had an Irish temper. And there would be periods of silent treatment. And this icy weather, even in summer, was not tolerable. But they were so much like Mary, ordinary, not something highfalutin, not from high society. And during the COVID, these were the women in our church that held our church together. The churches were closed. There, were no, uh, there was no ability to go to the sacraments, the Eucharist, confession. We could not find our priests to come and anoint us because of COVID. And yet these women held our church together. They would call people on the phone. 
They would pray the rosaries by phone and by Zoom. And I realized how much they are like Mary, whose birthday we celebrate today. Mary, again, as I said before, was not chosen from high society. She was not chosen from as a daughter of the scribe of Pharisees. We don't even know who her parents were except by legend. And yet, she had the same issues as my mother and all the other women, my aunts, and all the other women we find in our church today. She had issues in terms of she did, not, she did not know how to deal with things, as in the case of the Annunciation, when she says, how is this going to happen? I do not know, give me an answer. And she got an answer. And our mothers and wives and sisters are like that. They'll stand and demand an answer. And because these answers are given, we can hold things together in a transparent way and in a logical way. She also had sorrows. Simeon said to her, and your own soul, a sword shall pierce. She had no idea what that was going to be, but as her life unfolded, she would have those few occasions that are actually reported, but there must have been en endless other ones. The one in the temple stands out. Can you imagine a mother? Most of you have children and you protect them. But what happens when a child is lost in a park or in a churchyard or in some place? Can you imagine that pain? Mary felt that pain. And then she had the difficulty of understanding what her son would say. Why did you search me? I must be about my father's business. What on earth did this child mean by saying that? And then she had the ability during her lifetime when they told her, your son might be going over the edge, he's working too hard. And she took her relatives to go and bring Jesus. A good chicken soup and broth would help him to regain his strength so he can go out and do his ministry. Yes, she was just like any one of us. And that is why God chose her. Chose her because every one of us, men and women, can relate to Mary and can relate to her issues, her problems, her sorrows, and her joys. When we come to the gospel, I think I'm going to get into a lot of trouble because I did not read the genealogy. But because of the televised mass, we cannot go through. The whole genealogy would take over three long minutes. But it is very important to read that genealogy again because you see, in the genealogy, the ancestry goes down from father to son. Abraham was the father of Isaac, Isaac the father of uh, Jacob, Jacob the father, and yes, it goes on. And right in the middle of that, you have five women. Now, the authors could easily have dropped these women. Why did they introduce them? And when we look at those women, Tamar, Rahab, Ruth, the wife of Uriah, and Mary, they all had an impact on the genealogy of Jesus Christ. You know, all of them, apart from Mary, were people I'd rather not have in my genealogy. Tamar was raped by her stepbrother and later on had to marry him. Rahab was a prostitute. She lived in Jericho, and when the Israelite spies came to spy on Jericho, she hid them with the promise that I'm hiding you from the king, and if you are safe, you will protect me. And then there was Ruth. Ruth was a good woman, a wonderful woman. The unfortunate thing was she was a Moabite belonging to the enemy, the arch enemy of Israel. And then there was the wife of Uriah. We all know her as Bathsheba and the adultery with Jacob. Why did they admit all these names in it? There must be some reason. And the reason is pretty simple to me. It might be a different reason to you. Namely, that I'm not 
responsible for the ancestors that I have before me. I am responsible for my own actions. I can't say that my father, grandfather, great-grandfather were murderers, robbers, thieves, and all that, and therefore that's what I am. No, I'm responsible for my own actions. And so even though we have the Son of God, he comes from an ancestry that is very tarnished. It's up to you and me to follow Mary and realize the Almighty has done great things for us and holy is his name. God bless you all. Would you join me now as we pray together? For all those in the daily televised mass community book, we pray to the Lord. Lord. Loving and gracious God, we ask you to receive these prayers that we make in faith and through the intercession of our blessed mother, Mary. We make them through Christ our Lord. Pray, my sisters, my brothers, that this our sacrifice be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the humanity of your only begotten Son come, O Lord, to our aid. And may he who at his birth from the Blessed Virgin Mary did not diminish but consecrated her integrity by taking from us now our wicked deeds and make an oblation acceptable to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. And lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere, to praise your mighty deeds in the exaltation of all your saints, and especially as we celebrate the solemnity of the Nativity of the Blessed Virgin Mary, to proclaim your kindness as we echo her thankful hymn of praise. For truly, even to earth's ends, you have done great things and extended your abundant mercy from age to age. When you looked on the lowliness of a handmaid, you gave us through the author of our salvation, your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him, the host of angels adore your majesty and rejoice in your presence forever. May our voices be pray joined with theirs in a chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. i 
indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving you thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Francis our Bishop, the bishops across Canada, all the clergy and this entire people of God. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all that with the blessed Virgin Mary, mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we now dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, with your spirit. and wherever you are, let us share the sign of peace and friendship. <clears throat>
behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us all to everlasting life. Please join me now in this act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart, as though you were already there. I embrace you and unite myself wholly to you, Permit not that I should ever be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. May your church exult, O Lord, for you have renewed her with these sacred mysteries as she rejoices in, an, in the nativity of the Blessed Virgin Mary, which was the hope and the daybreak of salvation for all the world. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Bow your heads for a special blessing. May God, who through the childbearing of the Blessed Virgin Mary, willed in his great kindness to redeem the human race, be pleased to enrich you with his blessings. Amen. May you always and everywhere have the protection through her whom you have found worthy to receive as the author of life. Amen. May you who have devoutly gathered on this day carry away with you the gifts of spiritual joy and heavenly rewards. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go now in the peace of Christ to love and serve the Lord and one another. Thanks be to God. Our thanks to our donors for the gift of this Mass.